Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to our mid-season review for the Spring 2023 forecast. So, uh, at the end of February, I think it was 26th February, we released the Gals Spring 2023 forecast. And uh, we uh, then said that we'd get to a halfway point of the season. We would do a review where we'd see how the forecast is going, make any changes or tweaks to the forecast if necessary. And uh, so that's what we're doing for this one. We're going to go through um, the spring so far and see how it is performing uh, or how the forecast is performing against the uh, against the uh, data up to this point. So I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just to say that if you're enjoying the videos of the channel at the moment, please do you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that and that you'll be able to see future weather content including future uh, long range uh, forecasts. We're halfway through our summer updates at the moment and uh, of course it won't be too much longer before we release the summer forecast. Goodness gracious me, that will be at the end of May. And uh, then we'll be on to autumn updates. We never stop at Gowsworthies. Before we know it, the winter updates uh, will be rolling around again, I'm quite sure. Um, but anyway, if you're enjoying the content, including the long range, please like, share, subscribe, and share, 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 Richard, for the lovely, lovely Gowsworthies spring forecast gift. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. It was a lovely gift, wasn't it? Fantastic. Thank you so much, my friend. Okay, let's have a look then and see how things are shaping up. So, we'll start off uh, with the uh, anomaly for the first half of the spring uh, 2023 in terms of the 500 millibar uh, anomaly. So, uh, this is it. <coughs> She's really taking us from the first day of March to the 15th day of April. You can see it has been an unsettled spring so far. Low pressure in the Atlantic and into northern and West Europe. It has been a spring that has had northern blocking as well. We see a signal for Greenland blocking. And it has also had some high pressure down on Spain, though. So this could be, it could be really quite a cold spring, I think. If it hadn't been this ridge down here, um, keeping winged in west, and I suspect the block around Greenland would probably have forced this trough eastwards, and we would have brought down a lot of northerly winds. As it is, the high pressure over Greenland has produced uh, several cold snaps. So we've got another one of those coming up um, this coming weekend and into early next week into the final weekend of the closing week of uh, April. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a spring where cold snaps have been on and off. It hasn't been continuously cold, which is about what we expected, really, within the spring forecast. We said that the first half of spring was likely to have uh, regular colder snaps, but wasn't going to be like a 2013. You know, we wasn't going to be frozen and snow-covered uh, for weeks on end, as we was in, in uh, March into April. Uh, of uh, 2013. We were channeling more sort of 2008, that kind of spring, um, which, uh, you know, uh, did um, uh, have cold snaps on and off, especially from the middle of March to the middle of April, but wasn't continuously cold, did have milder uh, periods in between. So how does that uh, anomaly so far compare with the analogue? So remember, these are for the overall spring. So uh, for our spring forecast, this is how the analogue looked for year scoring four or more, and it was quite, a, for hits or more of in methodology, and uh, it was quite an unsettled signal for those, <coughs> excuse me, for those, um, uh, for those springs. We see a bit of a signal for higher pressure in the North Atlantic and also in all Scandinavia. So it was a bit of a signal for higher pressure in high latitude. But I think overall, the, the four heats or more analogue uh, is, uh, is um, perhaps a little bit more unsettled than we've had uh, this uh, spring so far. Uh, this is how uh, the uh, analogue looks, analog looks for years going five hits or more. Um, again, we do see that signal for higher pressure towards the North Atlantic and towards Greenland as well. Some lower pressure is in the Atlantic. So, you know, you're never going to get a like-for-like -like match. But you know, I think there's some sort of similarity there. And then this is how the analog looks for the two years that scored six hits or more, which was 1999 and uh, 2012. And again, we see that signal for higher pressure towards Greenland in the North Atlantic and some lower pressure around here uh, in the north and the west of uh, Europe as well. So, Hints, you know, there are hints there, I think, of, uh, of the pattern we've had so far. Remember, this could change quite significantly, because right? so this is only up to the middle of um, 
middle of April. We've got another, uh, you know, half a season to go from the middle of April to the end of May uh, before we get our final analogue. So uh, that is subject to change. I think, like, you know, there's certainly similarity with the higher pressure in the North Atlantic anyway and, uh, and towards Greenland there. But it has been perhaps a slightly more westerly type spring than uh, the analogue would have suggested. That is how uh, the spring of 2008, or uh, that's how 2008 looks up to the uh, middle of March anyway, uh, up to the middle of April, I should say, from the 1st March to the middle of April. Uh, looks like that with a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge. Again, you know, some sort of high pressure around Greenland. The trough low pressure this time is more over to the east of the country, which, as I say, is what you would have, we wouldn't have expected this year without the ridge going towards Spain and Portugal in 2008. We didn't have that high pressure going into Spain and Portugal, so consequently the block around Greenland in the North Atlantic was able to force the um, low pressure go in that direction. Remember, spring forecast suggested that the second half of spring would turn dry and uh, warmer, particularly so in uh, May. So uh, we are waiting to see whether we're going to get some higher pressure and some warmer weather in May if we do. But I think overall the spring forecast probably won't be too bad. This is how the temperature anomaly looks for March overall. For our temperature anomaly, by the way, we said probably quite close to average for uh, for the spring. So not particularly big de deviation set against 81 to 20. We've actually removed 81 to 20. Um, from the uh, climate averages page at the UK Met Office now. So it's either 61 to 90, 90 or 91 to 20, 20. So from, I'd say from the summer forecast, we will be um, doing our forecast anomalies against 91 to 20, 20. I wasn't expecting 81 to 20, 10 to, <laughs> to disappear, uh, actually, uh, not that soon. So um, we're going to be, uh, from the summer forecast, we will be doing our averages from 91 to 2020. But anyway, against 90, so bear back in mind for spring forecast, but against 91 to 2020, in, in March, we see that most places were like within uh, a half a degree of average. It was a colder than average March across large portions of Scotland and some parts of Wales, also south east in England, interestingly. Uh, just that little area in Northern Ireland, slightly above average. But most places had an had a average sort of temperature in uh, March. And April was all, uh, March was also a wet month as well, with significantly above average rainfall for England, whereas it did turn a little bit drier towards the uh, northwest of Scotland, though. Um, for April, we haven't got any finalised data, of course. We can see it but with the CT. We are actually quite close to average for 61 to 90, 90, probably a little bit below for, uh, for 91 to 2020. Um, no, I would suspect that's not going to change all that much. I wouldn't have thought from there. It may tick down a little bit, actually, over the weekend into next week. So April has a chance of coming out colder than average, I think, set against uh, 91 to uh, 2020. And then it will, this is for the UK, uh, and then it will be down to uh, what happens in May, you know, as to whether it's slightly above or slightly below average for the season overall. But I don't think we're going to have a particularly big deviation against 91 to 2020 in terms of uh, temperature. As far as precipitation goes, um, it has turned out to be a wetter, uh, as, as you just saw, it was a wet March, and it has turned out to be a wetter spring so far than anticipated. At the moment, our for April, our rainfall anomaly is standing at 76% uh, of uh, the average monthly rainfall, which is quite high, actually, for, you know, still some way off the end of the uh, month. So it may turn out to be a little bit wetter uh, this April, a little bit wetter than, than um, the average. Uh, we can see that, like, the first week of month, actually, a little bit drier than average, but then the second week became very wet. So I think overall, uh, you know, April could be slightly wetter than average, Ad and, and that adds to the wet um, March that we have, especially for England and Wales. So I, the forecast is a mixed bag. Um, let's just put webcam back on. The forecast is a mixed bag. I think the temperature is not looking too bad. We did say, like, March is probably going to be the coldest month, but there's quite a bit of uncertainty between March and April as to how that would work out, because we thought that the cold could be, like, from um, mid-March to mid-April, so it might cover a four-week window from mid-month to mid-month, so there was a bit of uncertainty about that, but March turned out to be a bit milder than expected, albeit it did have cold snaps, and now April is perhaps coming out a little bit cooler 
than uh, we expected. Again, albeit there have been warmer interviews. I think overall, though, the, the, up to up to this point, the um, the temperature foot side of the forecast is looking reasonable. You know, not a particularly big deviation. Certainly not an excessively warm spring, uh, and definitely not a, a really cold spring like we have in 2013. So temperature-wise, I think we're doing all right. Um, albeit the way we've got to that is a little bit. Um, different to how we anticipated. But then again, as I say, with middle seasonal forecast, with long range forecast, you're always going to get um, uh, deviations. You just really, with these, we're looking to try and get the main trains of the season. And if we can tick off, you know, the various um, main points of the season, then, then we're doing all right. But you will always get things that uh, uh, don't pan out 100%. As, as predicted, because any forecast beyond five, seven days is uh, very, uh, you know, hard to do, and, and it's random, and um, there's a lot of randomness uh, within that. Precipitation-wise, I think we've had a wetter spring than anticipated, and I would tweak the forecast a little bit more towards the wet side. We had to do this with the winter forecast as well, actually. We uh, went for, like, average precipitation for the winter, we had to uh, tweak that. Uh, a little bit onto the wetter side, um, albeit in the end we finish up with a very dry February though. Um, but I would move perhaps the precipitation side of the forecast to slightly, um, uh, you know, slightly uh, towards the uh, wetter side actually. So uh, I think it could be a little bit wetter than we anticipated. Temperature wise, we're not doing too badly. It will depend on what happens in May though. If we have a cool May, then we're going to come out actually with a colder season than we uh, predicted. But uh, at the moment, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I'm sure most of you are too, after a, a, a long run of unsettled and often quite cool weather, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will have uh, something a little bit better for May, a slightly drier and uh, warmer May, hopefully. And if we do, then I don't think the spring forecast is, is too bad. So I'm not going to really make any dramatic adjustments to this, forecast, to this forecast. I don't think it's off the rails, you know, as some of them can do. I think overall it's not done too badly. Um, and uh, so I'm going to stick primarily to what we said at the end of February, albeit, um, yes, I think it is a little bit of a wetter season than we uh, anticipated. But then again, we might get a very dry May, and if we do, then the precipitation uh, prediction would also come out. OK. Right, so uh, that's it then. Nothing particularly dramatic to report, actually. Everything, you know, is more or less on course with this spring forecast, I think. Um, so uh, let's just wait and see where we finish up at the end of the season. Of course, when we get into the beginning of June, we will uh, evaluate the forecast, you know, the, the original forecast and this, uh, and this uh, mid-season review. You know, we'll, we will verify uh, both of the uh, forecasts and updates and whatnot. Right, that's it then. So thank you so much to Richard for our spring 2023 forecast gift. As I say, we are well into summer updates now and the gas level is summer forecast will be released on uh, the 28th of May, I think it is, and then after that we will be off and running into autumn <laughs> updates, and don't forget, it won't be long, sometime in June, before we have the winter 2023-24 NAO forecast, so that will be coming up in uh, June, look out for that. For this spring uh, review, mid-season review, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you soon with the next one. Bye for now.